Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8 Ant Garden. And today I wanna to address a lot of questions I've been receiving and those are about plans for my 2023 cut flower garden. There's four different areas that I'm gonna be working on and then I wanted to show you all a bunch of the varieties of flowers that I plan on growing this year. So I've been growing cut flowers seriously for about three years. Prior to that, I grew them just for fun um, for a couple of years, I just a little bit here and there. But for the last three years, I've been seriously growing them in my own backyard to utilize in arrangements for myself and my home. I do not grow cut flowers to sell. I don't, I'm not a cut flower farmer. Um, I'm just an average person, you know, in an average home on a small plot of land who decided that she loves flowers, wants to grow flowers, and wants to be able to cut them and bring them into her home. A few more things about me. I do have a floral background. I used to be a florist and I have helped design large scale weddings for several years. So I do know a lot about flowers in general. However, growing flowers is a totally different situation and that's something that I've really worked to learn about the last five years. I want to point out that one of the other things about me is I'm not growing flowers in large quantities. I am not a flower farmer where I am growing vast amounts of flowers. I'm growing the flowers that I want for myself and that I share with family and friends. I'm also very focused on budget as I don't have a massive budget to spend on flowers and my gardens. And so that is something that I really kind of focus on to make sure that I'm spending within a certain amount each month or less. And that I'm also looking for very kind of um, economical approaches to gardening for myself. So let's talk about four of my big plans for this year for my 2023 cut flower garden. One of my big focuses this year is crop rotation or flower rotation. I'm not actually growing a bunch of vegetable crops, but flower crop rotation. One of the things I've done in the past is I kind of just planted everything in the same place every year, which actually isn't really great for your soil or for the environment that you're creating within your garden. It's important to move your flowers around to different places each year. I'm saying like, you know, one year I've had zinnias in a flower garden, and then the next year I've just planted zinnias again, and then the third year I've planted zinnias again. So the idea is that instead of planting zinnias there, I need to put something else there, maybe azure radium, maybe dianthus, maybe sunflowers but I want to mix it up instead of planting the same thing in the same place every year so let's talk about some benefits for rotating your crops within your garden one of the first things is that it improves your soil nutrients each plant needs different requirements or different aspects of nutrients within your soil if you are planting the same thing in the same place year after year it's going to deplete the nutrients that it requires each year but by moving some other plants in and changing up rotations, you can actually build soil health. One of the big ways of doing that is building soil health through different types of root structure, right? Sunflowers have a different root structure than zinnias. And so sunflower roots are gonna add different benefits than zinnia roots are going to add. That's also one of the reasons where I don't tend to pull up all of my plants at the end of the year. I like to cut them right at the base of the soil and just allow the roots to rot within the soil and build up nutrients within it. And by keeping those different root systems in there, it really helps to build up the biomass within the soil. And of course, by having different plants in different places, it's going to add more biodiversity throughout the space, which is also going to be good. It's going to help interrupt any kind of uh, disease or insect cycles, right? If you struggle with a certain amount of mildew, uh, powdery mildew on your zinnias and you plant them in the same place year after year, most likely you're going to find that that powdery mildew gets worse year after year. But if you move your zinnias to different places, Places, you're going to be breaking up the cycle of that powdery mildew and hopefully keep it to a minimum. And it's the same thing for pests, any kind of insects, if you're dealing with mealybugs or aphids, if you're moving your plants around or your cut flower crops around, it allows them to break up that cycle of where those aphids are. Most likely, if you have a plant that suffers one year and you keep it in the same place and year after year, no treatment, you're just going to see the, um, the pests get worse and worse each year. So that's one of my big goals is to force myself to jump out of my, you know, pre-scheduled linear outlook of where things go in the garden and force myself to put some of these cut flowers in different places. One of my other big goals this year is I am actually developing an heirloom chrysanthemum garden. Now, 
Chrysanthemums are actually gonna be huge in the next few years. You've probably seen a couple of videos starting to pop up about it. I'm telling you, in three years, chrysanthemums are gonna be the it thing, heirloom chrysanthemums. And so what I've done is I've ordered a variety of heirloom chrysanthemums from Bluestone Perennials, and I have a video all about those uh, mums that I've ordered. So I'll put the link below in the video description. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually cleaning out one of my backside gardens, and I'm gonna clear out that space, and that whole garden is gonna be devoted to heirloom chrysanthemums. Now, heirloom chrysanthemums are a perennial in my area. I am zone 8A. So they come back year after year. They typically die back all the way to the ground and then come back from the roots each season. Chrysanthemums can be developed into potentially a two cycle situation. You can have them coming up in the spring. You typically will get a bloom cycle somewhere around June. By July 4th, you cut them all back and you allow a new bloom cycle to come and then you'll have a bloom cycle in the fall. So typically you can get two bloom cycles out of chrysanthemums. The varieties that I've ordered are more florist varieties. So they're really tall, long stems, larger blooms, and stems that I can utilize in my actual cut flower arrangement. Those plants I ordered back in fall, there are still several av available on Bluestone Perennials, so you can go check it out. There are also a wide variety of uh, farms that are going to be selling them. I am purchasing the plants from Bluestone Perennials, so it is arriving with roots, a full plant, the whole situation. A lot of farms have stopped selling the plants because chrysanthemums are starting to be so popular. So they are only selling cuttings. So that's a big difference to look at when you're ordering. I don't have a ton of success with cuttings. I'm not very good. I'm kind of neglectful about cuttings. And so they don't do as well in my garden just from my own potential neglect. But that's why I spent more on purchasing the full plant from Bluestone Perennials. So I'll have some videos coming up of myself clearing out that potential portion of the garden and getting it prepped for these heirloom chrysanthemums. So one of the big reasons I started this whole endeavor with heirloom chrysanthemums is I had an epic Dahlia fail last year. I invested like $300 in Dahlia tubers. So excited. I got them all sprouting in their containers, ready to go, put them out, and then nothing, nothing, not one bloom from those tubers. And, oh, it was heartbreaking. And I've done dahlias in the past and I've only ever had like a 50% like, um, you know, achievement in them. I've gotten some blooms, but not many. They're, I don't get a ton. I think one of the big struggles in my area is how hot it gets. And um, we just go from spring to super hot for so long. And then we have a really, you know, we have a short growing season in the fall. And I just, I can't get any dahlias. And so I was spending all this money on these dahlia tubers and I was like, I can't keep doing this. It's so defeating. And so I had been doing some research on uh, mums because I love utilizing fall mums in my front garden as a perennial. And I cut from those and I utilize those in arrangements. And so I started doing a little bit more research and I discovered blue sown perennials, heirloom, chrysanthemums. And I was like, this is my answer. These flowers will bloom twice a year, once in the, you know, kind of early summer, and then I can get them to bloom again in the fall, which is when I would typically typically get a lot of my dahlias. And I can get a lot, wide variety of mums that are really big and beautiful, and they have a similar look to dahlias. But I think that these heirloom chrysanthemums are gonna be much more reliable. They're perennials. I'm gonna have them each year. I don't have to stress about worrying if the bulbs are gonna rot digging them up, all this kind of stuff. And I have cared for chrysanthemums in my gardens for years and years and years. So I feel pretty good about my capability of growing these heirloom chrysanthemums for cut flowers. One of my other big goals this year is creating more kind of a whimsical character throughout my garden. So I started with just a bare backyard with some serious drainage issues, <laughs> some slope issues, all kinds of problems. And I've built that up over the last few years. And I feel like I'm getting in a good place where I have a lot of planting space. So now what I wanna do is I wanna really wanna come in and add um, some whimsical character that really fits my personality a lot better. I'm really looking at adding quite a few trellises with a lot of climbers this year, potentially a lot of climbing roses, clematis, 
Venus, um, Star Jasmine, a wide variety of kind of climbing vines. And the idea is to bring the look up of all the flowers and create more of a cocoon in my backyard. And I think that'll really kind of go towards that kind of secret garden effect I like. I don't want everything to be pristine and perfect in my backyard. My front and side gardens, that's a different situation. But my backyard, I really want it to feel magical when I walk outside. That's one of the reasons I have this beautiful willow tree as one of my focal points in my entire yard. And the way that willow tree feels throughout all the seasons, it's so wonderful, it's so captivating, and really kind of brings in that quality I'm looking for. So I really want to build on that character. I also want to add some silliness to the yard. I want some silly little sculptures that, you know, make you go, oh, that's weird. You know, I have several um, kind of garden sculptures that I inherited from my grandmother years ago and some that I've collected, but I've never put them in areas that they're really seen or utilized or enjoyed. So I really want to go about utilizing that. And I really want to focus on thrifted or garage sale or Facebook marketplace items. I'm really trying not to buy new. And so this is one of the pieces that I recently picked up from the um, thrift store and it's iron, it's nice and hard. It was $10 full price, but that was a 50% off day. So I got this for $5. So what I'm you know, really looking for when I'm thrifting is fun, whimsical items that I can tuck into the garden that'll add some unique structure and interest without being a huge price tag. And one of the things you're really gonna see from me if you're following my channel, is this thrifted approach versus a new approach. Is there a different way I can do something that's more cost-effective and good for the environment versus buying all the brand new things? So don't get me wrong, I love all the brand new things. I think they're wonderful. They don't fit in my pocketbook. I, I don't have the money to go buy a $250 trellis. But over here, I might be able to figure out a situation with reclaimed wood, you know, some tension wire and some beautiful glass beads and create a gorgeous trellis for 20 bucks. So that's really kind of the direction I'm wanting to go. And that kind of direction takes time, right? I can't just go to the store and buy all the things I want and come set it up in my garden and wham, bam, I'm done, right? Instead, I'm gonna take this more collected, thrifted approach but I'm gonna be more hands-on. These are gonna be coming from my own hands. Uh, there's a journey to finding each of these items. So I actually really feel like it's going to relate better to who I am as a person and the kind of vision that I have for my garden. One of the other ways I wanna add a lot of whimsical quality to my garden is I really wanna install a lot of um, fairy lights that utilize solar um, power. So that's one of my big goals this year. I really wanna wrap a lot of my existing trellises, um, any additional elements that I continue to add to the garden. I wanna wrap them with white fairy lights and I wanna have those all on uh, solar power. And so that's a huge goal for me because I don't go out and enjoy my garden enough at dusk and evening. And I feel like if I could have these lights through the space, I'd be more likely to go out there and enjoy, but also my backyard garden has a bank of windows that looks into my living room. So I would love to be curled up on my couch to be able to look out those windows and to see the sparkly fairy lights outside. Okay, and the fourth big thing or big goal for my cut flower garden this year is creating a shade garden. So I have an area in the backyard that's kind of to the side of the house and it's kind of just a neglected storage area right now. And grass has a really hard time growing over there because they get a lot of shade. Well, in Texas zone 8A, shade's not really a thing unless you have a lot of massive old trees on your property. So I'm really excited to kind of cultivate that area. I'm gonna remove all the grass. I wanna lay down a bed of gravel. I have a beautiful Vigo garden bed um, that they sent me that I want to install in there and utilize as the beginning part of a shade garden. I also hope to install um, some kind of like potting bench or kind of workspace area that I hope to make from reclaimed wood um, in that side area. I have a lot of my hydrangea garden. If anybody followed my hydrangea, hydrangea garden that's been on my back porch, that's gonna get shifted over into the shade garden. 
I kind of envision this beautiful kind of arch trellis that you enter through to access the shade garden and that trellis will cast more shade on that area. So I kind of see the front of that trellis as beautiful climbing roses coming from both sides and then entering the shade garden. So that is a project I've been working on. My goal was to get that done during the winter. It did not happen, y'all. I have been sick, 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 one after the other. And when I haven't been sick, we've had family members sick and we've just had so many activities going on because I do have three children. There's a lot going on in our house. And so I haven't gotten to as much of that as, of that as I want. And at first I was kind of berating myself and being like, oh, you should have done that. And I'm like, no, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that as you enjoy the project, right? When you have time and when you can enjoy it. So that is one of my big goals for 2023 is to have that shade garden installed. Okay, so those are my four major goals for 2023. It sounds like a lot. It is a lot. And um, will I get all of them done? I don't know but this is my goal. <laughs> these are my plans, these are my ideas, and these are things that really excite me. A lot of times I get wrapped up in making videos and trying to keep up with the other garden, gardener YouTubers and what they're doing and what they're showing. And I think a lot of times I have to stop myself and be like, I don't actually wanna make that video. That video doesn't sound fun to me. It's not interesting to me. And I really feel like I need to focus back on videos that I want to make and that I want to share because those are gonna be better quality videos in the end. And I really think you'll be able to read more of my passion through something that I'm really excited on as opposed to just something that, well, everybody else says you're supposed to do this video at this time of the year. I don't really wanna do that. I just wanna do what I love and show you guys what I'm doing that I love. Okay, so we're at the end. Let me talk about all the flowers that I am gonna be growing. This year with the whole seed um, catalog from Baker Creek, I bought a lot of seeds, really excited about all this. And then Bluestone Perennials that I mentioned earlier, this is one of their bulb books, but Bluestone Perennials really inspired me and I purchased quite a few perennials from them in the fall that have already been planted that are gonna be a wide variety of new cut flowers for me. But also I have that round of heirloom um, chrysanthemums that's coming this uh, spring. So I'm really excited about that. So let's talk about a lot of the flowers that I'm really excited about growing for cut flowers this year. Always zinnias, always zinnias. I love zinnias. They're easy to grow. If you are a beginner cut flower gardener, start with zinnias. You will feel such you know warmth and satisfaction when you see these zinnias and how much they can produce for you. Sunflowers. I'm going to be growing a lot of sunflowers this year, a lot of pro-cut sunflowers and a lot of branching sunflowers. Pro-cut sunflowers are the single stem, one bloom sunflowers. They're typically grown for florists. Branching sunflowers definitely can be cut and utilized as uh, cut flower arrangements. However, there's a lot of whimsical quality that I love about branching sunflowers, which is why I love to have them in my garden. Next, heirloom chrysanthemums. You guys already heard me mention that is gonna be a huge focus in my garden this year and a huge goal. I'm not looking that I'm gonna actually have blooms this early summer because the plants I'm receiving are like four by four. I mean, they're small little plants. Actually, I have a couple of perennials over here from um, Bloomstone uh, perennials that I didn't get uh, planted. And so I'm gonna get them planted soon, I just have a bit, but this is kind of how they come like this. The plants typically can be dormant. This looks dead, but it's not. It's got green in here, it's still growing. But this is basically what my, um, my chrysanthemums are gonna look like when they get to me. So I don't anticipate that I'm going to have blooms early summer. However, I really do anticipate that I'm gonna have, you know, a pretty good showing this fall. But obviously, it follows the same kind of idea with plants sleep, creep, leap. So they sleep the first year, they creep the second year, and they leap the third year. So it could be a few years before these chrysanthemums are giving me, you know, huge amounts of stock. But I am very excited and they will be a huge focus for me this year. I'm also gonna have a huge focus on dianthus as a cut flower for myself this year. 
I've actually grown dianthus in my landscape for many years. I love dianthus and it grows as a perennial for me in my zone 8A area here in North Texas. It does really well. I utilize it in my landscape quite frequently. Um, I've kind of mastered where I can trim it back and receive flush after flush after flush of blooms from dianthus. It's a very inexpensive plant in my area, which is really great. And so I love just tucking it into different aspects of my landscape and having color year round. Now, this year, the focus is, is I'm growing a lot of dianthus that's taller varieties that I can utilize as cut flowers. So that's gonna be a huge focus for me. You might have watched the recent video where I started three varieties of dianthus, including sweet white, sweet black cherry, and sweet purple and white. And those, they're actually doing really well. The seeds are up, they're doing great. I'm growing them all from seed, but those are gonna be a big focus for me this year because I am hoping to grow these particular dianthus as a perennial. There will be a little bit of care in that they kind of borderline perennial so most likely I am going to have to um, cover them with a good layer of mulch through the winter months and I am going to be very focused on them keeping them trimmed back so that we can really build really great healthy root systems earlier on since I am growing them from seed. So I might not receive a lot of blooms from them this year, but I do have hopes that, you know, by working on these seeds, that in future years, they'll give me a huge amount of blooms to, you know, really enjoy. And finally, one of the other big focuses for the cut flowers I'm be growing this year are going to be herbs. So I'm really looking at adding a lot more herbs to my arrangements. There's a couple of reasons for this. Herbs are utilized for multiple things. I can utilize them for cut flower. They're also really great to use, obviously, for culinary reasons, but they also are really great about keeping pests away within the garden. So they kind of have a trifecta of different things that they can do for you within your garden. And with that in mind regarding herbs, I really feel like I'm not utilizing them as much as I could be utilizing them within my garden. Most of them are fairly easy to grow from seed. They're not that expensive of a plant to buy at your local nursery. And so I'm really hoping to kind of focus a little bit more on that. A couple of the things I'm wanting to focus on are mint. Now don't worry, I'm not planting it in the ground. I'm gonna be planting this in containers, but I would really love some mint right there on my back porch in the heat of the sun where I can clip it and have that smell of mint throughout my entire garden. I'm also gonna be growing borage, which kind of produces a beautiful blue flower, great as a cut flower, great as an herb, and it's actually a beautiful plant. So I would really like to get that started within my garden. I also started a kind of a hardy herb, a bronze, fennel, bronze leaf fennel, and I actually started that back in the fall, and it had done brilliantly through all of these kind of frozen, even this last ice storm that we have. It's wonderful. So I'm really excited because I'm hoping that that will become perennialized within my garden, and I'm really kind of interested in kind of that bronzy brown foliage as opposed to a traditional green foliage. So that's gonna be really fun to utilize in some arrangements this year. And as always, I'm gonna be growing several varieties of basil. Last year, I discovered cardinal basil and I am obsessed with it. So I'm gonna be growing a lot of cardinal basil. It has a bright green, beautiful leaf, but then it kind of creates this plume of kind of flower leaves at the top that are a deep kind of purple, sometimes almost burgundy look to them. And they were stunning in arrangements and they held up beautifully in cut flower arrangements, like 10 days plus, absolutely gorgeous. They're a stunner in the garden, absolutely beautiful. So even if you don't have like a raised bed cut flower garden, taking some of that cardinal basil and tucking it into different places of your landscape, you will not be disappointed. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy this rundown of my big four goals for my 2023 cut flower garden and some of the flowers that I'm really gonna be focused on, my main focus on as I go throughout this year. Now, the flowers and herbs and greenery that I listed, those are not the only flowers I'm growing. That's just some of the things I'm most excited about and that are my main focus. I will be growing 50, 60, 70 other varieties of flowers as well. So there's gonna be plenty for you to watch and learn and enjoy throughout the entire year. All right, I would love to hear some of your thoughts and comments about some of my goals and some of the flowers I've chosen to grow this year. 
if you've had experience with any of that, I would love to know. If you're a big thrifter and love adding things to your garden, I'd love to know what you've done in the past. If you have thoughts on my garden, I would love to know that as well. One of my big things I also wanna do is I wanna show more wider views of what my garden looks like because truthfully, I learned so much from you all and y'all all have such good thoughts all the time. I get comments of, hey, you should do this. Have you thought about this? And I'm like, oh, no, I haven't thought about that. So I would love to get more eyes on the kind of look and kind of direction of my current garden I'm still basic I'm still this is still a beginning garden garden you know some of these gardens are one year old two year old three years old the oldest ones are three years old so this is still a very new garden but I really want to go in the direction of building a lot of elements that kind of bring everything in kind of have a cocoon, warm, secret garden feel, very whimsical, silly, and fun. So I wanna give you guys more wide views so you can give me feedback on what your thoughts are and what you suggest that I do within my garden. All right, hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you check me out on my community page, on my YouTube page, and make sure you check me out on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.